luck. There's an empty space right in front of the bank. Go on, screws, be nipping quick. Right, I'll do that. Right. Don't you're in a bit of a hurry. I'm after a man, sir. Oh, join the club. No, no, what I mean is I'm, I'm chasing a fellow that's just robbed a bank. What's he look like? Oh, big, dark, broad, well-muscled. Oh, I say. Have you seen him, sir? No, but I've dreamt about him. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Suppose, 
Greeno, sir. We are able to return the money intact. Thank you, Constable. You can rest assured I should be getting in touch with your superior officer. Oh, oh, oh. Shall I take the money for you, sir? No, no, no. I'm not going to let this money out of my sight. In you go, Hawkins. Very good, sir. the blazes we're doing here. Complete and utter waste of time, if you ask me. I agree with your sentiments entirely, Ernie. What a waste of an afternoon. That widow from the sweet shop on the corner was going to take me to the Odeon to see that new sexy film. <laughs> you ought to be ashamed of yourself. What's that called, then? Lord of the Flies. they were going to keep us hanging about here. I think the least you can do is try and be a bit patient. After all, I'm the one who's pregnant. Yes, we know you are, but I mean... Humour her, Dad, humour her. They'll have her own way. You know what they're like when they're like this? Get their fancies. Yes, her mother was the same when she was carrying her. All she fancied was taking all her clothes off except her best hat and cooking little sausages over a spirit stove. <laughs> There's no harm in that. What, on a 65 bus going to Chiswick? <laughs> I just want to be sure, that's all. I know, love. All right. All right, love. If he hadn't got that old photograph album out, I'd never have known. He's always causing trouble. Big mouth. All I'm concerned about is your grandchild. Poor little soul. <laughs> <laughs> Do I know you? No, senor. Well, what are you staring at me for, then? You remind me of my sainted parent. Oh. <laughs> Look like your father, do I? <laughs> no, senor. My mother. <laughs> Come here to have your eyes tested, have you? <laughs> no, senor. It is a family problem. Wife beating. Oh. Out here, out here. That's uh, shocking, that is. Yeah. You know the Italian people's molto passionata, very hot blooded. When the temper is lost, blood everywhere. <laughs> oh, I'm surprised, a nice little fella like you. Mr. Mastroianni, si? your wife has spoken to the psychiatrist and is feeling much better. No more a wife a beating? No, she's promised never to lay a finger on you again. Caro <laughs> mio! Oh, bambini! Sarà perfetto nella parte un bacio. Sarà perfetto un bambini. You see the size of that woman? <laughs> She'd take a bit of beating, wouldn't she? Uh -huh. <laughs> I wouldn't give Leeds United much chance. <laughs> Are you waiting for Dr. Foss? Oh, yeah. that's right. Would you come straight through, please? Come yeah. in. This way, please. <laughs> oh. <laughs> take a seat, please. Mrs. Lloyd? Yes. yes. <laughs> I'm awfully sorry, I can only see one patient at a time. Oh, well, it's a family problem, you see. I uh, see another one of those. All right, then, who's beating who? <laughs> no, Doctor, you don't understand. Let me explain, darling. You, you see, Doctor, we are pregnant. What, all three of you? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you see, uh, my wife is pregnant and I'm the husband. Yes, and I'm the father. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you don't understand, you see, he, he is the father of my wife. Ah. 
Uh, you do understand, Mrs. Lloyd, that I don't deal with pregnancies. My concern is with psychological disturbances, mental aberrations, and lesions. Are you a nut, Doctor? <laughs> In a word, yes. Ah, uh, well, then we come to the right department, then, yes. See, Doctor, it was um, something that my father-in-law said, something from the way distant past that give my wife a bit of a bad turn, you see. Oh, really? Well, tell me about it. Well, it happened last Sunday afternoon. Dad and Ernie have been having a few words, you Yes, see. you see, he tried to tell me that he won the military medal in the First World War. Him, him, him. Well, so I did. I won it at Mons. How come nobody down at the British Legion knows anything about it but you, then? Because I was under orders to keep quiet. <laughs> I won it for spying. Anyway, Dad goes up in the loft to look for his medals. And when he comes down, he's got this old photograph album with him. Which was the cause of all the trouble. Uh, perhaps I can have a look at it. Yes, well, it's just an ordinary snapshot album, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> there's, uh, there's my old man, rest his soul, oh. my father. <laughs> Taking on a farm, I see. Eh? But he's holding a little pig. No. <laughs> Taking in our backyard. That's me he's holding. <laughs> huh? See, the, uh, the nappy had slipped. Oh. <laughs> That's uh, when I was a captain in the guards. Uh, Lance Bombardier in the gunners, mate. And that's uh, Lily when she was two and a half. <laughs> well, I really can see nothing alarming or disturbing about these. That's exactly what I've been trying to tell them. Thank you very much, Doctor. Come on, Lil. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You ain't getting away with that, mate. That's right, Ernie. Go on, Dad. Tell the doctor about your grandfather's sister, Mad Mariah Lampwick. I do not talk about my relatives in front of strangers. We are going to this time, mate. You're going to tell him all about Mad Mariah Lampwick's goings on. <laughs> Go on. Did you say Mad Mariah? Was she a little affected? A little. She was stark staring bonkers, according to him. Yes, and she was a criminal as well. Really? Well, only a little bit criminal. What do you mean, a little bit? You told us she was topped at Newgate. Well, the magistrates were very naughty in those days. They used to hang you if you hadn't got a TV licence. <laughs> she was an evil woman with bad blood in her. Go on, tell him what you told us about her being a highway woman. Yes, well, it, it all started when she, uh, when she <laughs> left school, you see. She uh, used to hang outside Regent's Park Zoo and old passers by up with a blunderbuss, you see. Uh, how fascinating. Yes, one night it went off and blew her into the alligator pool. What one of them bit her leg off, you see. What an incredible thing. Yeah. And what happened next? Well, I mean, what could you do? There she was with a wooden leg. So she bought a buttery guard, shoved it on her shoulder and became a pirate on the Thames in Mortlake, you see. <laughs> well, that figures. I've never heard such a load of cods up in all my life. Ernie! You see, Doctor, my wife feels there might be just a slight amount of truth in it, you see. She feels she may have inherited something nasty from the Lampwick side of the family. That's his side of the family, and... And Nipper might grow up to be a right little villain, you see. I do assure you, Mrs Lloyd, there's no chance of that happening whatsoever. Oh, I am relieved. Well, so am I. I told you there was nothing to worry about. But if you're calling me a liar, Ernie, let me tell you there's a picture of Mad Mariah in that album and pictures don't lie. Well, I'd like to have a look at that. Yes, well, there you well, are. Which one is she? There it is, that one with the dark hair yeah. there. Well, then perhaps you can explain how it is that this picture appears to have emanated from the Shepherd's Bush Empire in 1932 and bears the message to a faithful fan from Gracie Fields. <laughs> well, she had an alias, Shep. <laughs> you lying beast. You told us that pack of lies because you couldn't find that non-existent military medal up in the attic, didn't you? Well, I... I, I Dad, I... how could you? Fancy doing a thing like that to your own flesh and blood. Yeah. Come on, that's it. We're off, Doctor. Come on, darling, we're going home. But, uh, what would you do with him, eh, Doc? I must say, I find him absolutely fascinating. A perfect specimen of a pathological liar. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to have 48 hours with him to find out what goes on inside that twisted little brain. <laughs> would that mean keeping him in over the weekend, Doctor? I'm afraid it would, yes. Then, as his next of kin, you have our full permission. It'll be a nice little rest for you, Dad. You can't do that to me. I'm an ex-commando. <laughs> yeah, right again. Get out of here. Gentlemen, Mr. Yeah. Young Cook is our guest yeah. for the weekend. Shut your hands off me. I'm a friend of the Coffee is served, Sir Peter. 
<laughs> ah, 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 it's, uh, it's you, uh, Grovel. Uh, well, uh, uh, thank you very much indeed, uh, Clara, for your uh, assistance. You can uh, run along now. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, well, uh, Grovel, I've no doubt that you're wondering what Clara and I were up to on the settee. The mm. thought had crossed my mind, sir. Uh, yes, well, you see, Clara was helping me to look for something that I'd uh, taken out and it had slipped down behind the uh, cushions. <laughs> <laughs> I sincerely hope the young lady was successful in extricating itself. Oh, yes, yes, indeed she was, after a bit of a struggle. I can see there was, sir. Yes. During the course of it, you seem to have sustained a small wound to your face. Wound? Yes, there is a red mark on your cheeks. Ah! 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 Look, Robert, I suppose it's, uh... It's no good beating about the bush, is it? Not really, sir. No. Well, it was all perfectly innocent, you know. I mean, it was just a bit of how's your father? I mean, you're a man of the world, after all, aren't you, eh? Eh? <laughs> I, mean, I, I can't believe that at some time or another you hadn't slipped upstairs to the maid's quarters yourself, eh? And uh, if you haven't, well, please feel free to do so. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not bad, you know. As a matter of fact, it's quite good. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't stop anything out of your salary, you know. It's at times like these when I realise what a considerate employer you are, sir. Oh, good show, Gruffle, uh, good show. Um, you, uh, you wouldn't mention anything of this to her ladyship, would you? Oh, no, no. sir. Well, you see, it might get rather awkward. She could be very tricky. Please do not trouble yourself, sir. After all, man who is born of woman is but a weak reed which bends to every ill wind. Uh, oh, yes, yes, right. <laughs> well, then, um, how about a nice cup of coffee, huh? With respect, sir, her ladyship's presence being imminent, don't you think it would be as well to uh, wipe out the stains of battle, sir? Oh, my God. Good man, Grovel. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Grovel! <laughs> My lady. Sir Pete's late for coffee, I see. I'm afraid he's had his hands rather full this morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, that gives me a chance to have a word with you. It's about what happened a few minutes ago in the stables. You mean when I came to announce that coffee was served? Exactly. Now, what you saw in the straw was not really what you saw in the straw. <laughs> really? <laughs> By the way, are there any bits on my back? Just one or two pieces, my lady. was the group tripped and fell headlong into the store and you with commendable courage flung yourself underneath him to break his fall <laughs> something like that such courage do you know i must admire your attitude towards the lower classes milady how do you mean oh well i well remember the young window cleaner who slipped while cleaning the bathroom window and fell into a tub of hot water and you, without a moment's hesitation, stripped yourself of all your clothing and plunged in to save him. <laughs> yes, I'd quite forgotten that. Then there was the young soldier who was trapped in the potting shed. Yes, yes, yes. It I... really is necessary to revive all these old memories. And it might be as well not to mention the stable incident to Sir Peter. You can depend on me, my lady. Thank you, Grovel. <laughs> There you are, darling. Have a good ride? Yes, I am, darling. <laughs> well, you can serve the coffee now, Grovel. Immediately, sir. <laughs> and what have you been up to this morning, dear? Oh, well, uh, one thing and another. I've uh, been hard at it. <clears throat> uh, two lumps. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. Yes, thank you very much. Well, that's all now. You can push off Grovel unless there's anything... Uh... There is one small thing, sir. The head gamekeeper apprehended a poacher in the long spinny last night. Did he, by Jove? Good show. Well, I suppose we'd better send down to the village, then, for the village constable. I'm afraid that wouldn't do any good, sir. It was the village constable. <laughs> Damn sauce! 
Yes, but still, not to be too hard, darling. I mean, after all, what's a couple of pheasants against a blow in the bag, you know? <laughs> I entirely agree with you, sir. So I took the liberty of sending him home in the rolls with a couple of bottles of wine to drink with the bars. Good thinking, Grovel. Anything else? There is a small below stairs matter, sir. Yes. You are familiar with Clara, the upstairs maid? <laughs> I, I beg your pardon? She's a handsome girl, sir, well built. And uh, I dare say you've uh, seen her about the house. Oh, yes, I have. Yes. I may have done, yes, yes. Yes, well, she's about to plight her troth, sir. Plight her what? About to become engaged to be married, sir. Oh, oh. is she? Yes, my lady. And as is customary, the staff are having a whip round for a wedding present. Ah, uh, yes, I get your general drift, yes. Grovel. Yes, well, I don't see why we shouldn't buy the girl a present. What do you suggest? Well, a dining room suite, refrigerator, <laughs> canteen of cutlery, pair of sheets. Yes, we'll settle for a pair of sheets. I was thinking of the items in their entirety, sir. Ah. <laughs> yes, well, why not? In for a penny, I suppose. Really, darling, aren't you being rather stupidly generous? Who's this girl marrying? The tall, dark, handsome groom in the stables, my dear. <laughs> contribute a bedroom suite. How eminently suitable, my lady. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for bringing the matter up, Grovel. Very considerate of you. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, combined check will do. I will personally see to the purchases. Yes, I feel sure you would. Yes. Right, well, come along then, my darling. We'll see to this matter straight away. Yes. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Grovel. Did you manage to bring up the of the wedding present. Yes, my dear, I got you a very nice pair of sheets and a non-stick frying pan. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. Send a Vivian the footman in, will you, my dear? Yes. You sent for me, Mr. Grovel. <laughs> I want you to stand by this weekend. Her ladyship is having her cousin, the young ballet dancer fellow from Coffin Garden oh. down here, and I want you to take care of him. Oh, yes. <laughs> As you know, Clara is short of a washing machine. Oh, uh, I see. Uh, oh, nice. Market. When? Well, when you tripped over them skis and fell in the cabinet freezer. <laughs> and then that woman, she came up and asked if there was sport on top of your frozen cod balls. <laughs> Poor cow. She doesn't know what's coming to her. Oh, well, what is coming to her? Oh, now listen, why are we dressed like this? What did that professor say on the telly? Go on. What did he say, that professor say? Oh, listen, Arthur, I'm sick and tired of all them daft ideas you get off of that telly. I've said it before, that thing rules your life. Didn't he say that the Ice Age was coming back? Well, sort of. Right. Yes, but he said it might not happen for thousands of years. Ah, that's because they don't want anyone to panic. The authorities didn't want people storming into marks and sparks for woolly drawers. Oh. <laughs> Say it won't never happen in our lifetime. Oh, really? Well, how do you know you won't wake up tomorrow morning and find ten ton of snow in a front garden? Because tomorrow is August the 4th, that's why. <laughs> well, it's even's chance, though, isn't it? You'll be grateful, my girl, when the ice age comes, because you'll be the only one to go down to co-op. Mm, I shall go on the bus, as usual. Get out of the way. The 93 won't be running under them conditions. Eh? Be slipping and sliding all over the place. Besides... 
Won't be any conductors. Oh, well, why if I know? Well, then Pakistanis can't stand the cold. <laughs> Like flies. Yes, and so shall I, if I have to pull that flaming little sledge with me wherever I go. Yeah. And why are you pulling that sledge? That's not your job. Where's White Fang? <laughs> well, his legs give way outside the library. He's here in my bag. Well, what's he doing in there? He's a working dog. Get him out of there. How can I get him out? I'm an Eskimo, not a contortionist. Oh, come here, let's have a go. Come on, white fang. Yeah, I've got it. Come on. Right, white fang. Come on. Come on, little fang. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, white fang. He's like lightning, isn't he? Look at him. There you are. Here, you are. <laughs> Here Arthur. Yeah? I'm ever so worried about him, you know. Why? Well... His poor little feet. They'll get ever so cold in the snow. Yeah, judging by the length of his legs, that's not the only thing that's going to get cold. <laughs> here, give him here. Come on, darling. Let's go walk his, eh? Let's go walk his, there. Do you fancy a, a nibble on some nosh with your drink? Well, yeah, yeah, I don't mind. All right, then. Cut yourself a slice off for that. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? That's pemmican, that is. Pemmican? Pemmican, yes. You remember on the TV in Scott of the Antarctic? Hey? I'll tell you, Johnny Mills, he, he, he ate that, he did. Oh. Mind you, not that big. <laughs> what is it? Hey? That's meat, that is. Oh. That started out as breast of lamb. <laughs> Until I dried it out. However, did you do that? I shoved it under the mattress for a couple of months. <laughs> Godfathers, so that was it. And I thought something had died in our airing cupboard. <laughs> I had to have the round four times. Well, be grateful, my dear. That stuff would save your life when the crunch comes. Well, I still say it's all a load of Tommy rot. And that professor, he ought to be ashamed of himself. I mean, spreading all them daft rumours. I'll answer you in one word. Noah. <laughs> Noah, nor that? No, not Noah that. Noah, him what made the ark. When he heard the voice telling him it was coming on to rain... He started to build a boat, didn't he? Everybody else stood around laughing at him. But let me tell you something. If it hadn't been for him, we probably wouldn't be here. Here, yeah, Arthur, you're not thinking of bringing a load of animals into this house, are you? No, of course not. Here, yeah, listen, well, just supposing you're right. I mean, only supposing, well, what about my mum? Oh, well, bring her. Oh, oh that's good. Yeah, we can use her as bait. <laughs> you what? Well... No good feeding her, is it? I mean, imagine her trying to gum her way through that. <laughs> well, what are you going to do with her, then? Well, one of two things. We either tie her to the gate post and use her as polar bear bait, <laughs> or cut a hole in the ice and dangle one of her legs through so that when a shark comes up to take a bite, I can catch it, you see. That'll kill her? Well, I don't know. She could last for weeks if we dangle one leg at a time. <laughs> That's what you are cruel. Well, it's the survival at the fittest, isn't it? Oh, no, look here. What do we want all this beef dripping for? Oh, I need that to grease my skis with. Which reminds me, I must do some practice jumps. Jumps? Yeah. What for? Uh? Well, I've got to jump over the crevasses, haven't I? <laughs> How are you going to practice all that in here? Well, it's easy. I'll come down the stairs, see? I'll tell you what to do. You, you get the old clock and time me like they do on the box, all right? I'll see you outside. Arthur, are you sure you know what you're doing? Yeah, you just tie me as I flash past, that's all. Well, where are you going? I'm going into the bathroom so I can jump off the car's seat and get a longer run. <laughs> right, give me the all. One, two, three, go! We won't have to take your mum along. Oh, that's nice. I've just hit a lorry load of fish. Mm -hmm. Here, get that fried up, will you? Not there, right? <laughs>